the crime, the dimensions of which are still unknown. Police believe that Lonnie Franklin Jr. murdered at least 10 people, all African-American women from South Central Los Angeles, beginning in 1985. Authorities have been hard put to explain, however, a seeming gap in Franklin's alleged crimes between the years 1998 and 2002. Well, this apparent hiatus earned Franklin the nickname the Grim Sleeper. But now new evidence has come to light, and David Wright reports. Their faces from the past, 180 of them. Some smiling, some sleeping, some may even be dead. Images collected by a suspected serial killer. All of these people are potential victims? I hope not. Uh, but they, they interacted with uh, Lonnie Franklin at some point in their life. Detective Dennis Kilcoyne of the LAPD's Robbery Homicide Unit says all of these images were taken from the home of Lonnie Franklin Jr., the man suspected to be the grim sleeper serial killer. We searched every nook and cranny of this residence and the big uh, uh, commercial building that it had in the backyard. Vehicles, glove boxes, you know, under seats, so everywhere. We gathered cameras, uh, videos, and all types of stuff from all over the, the property. We are dealing with probably decades of photography by this guy because um, he is obviously the cameraman. And because Lonnie Franklin seems to have been the cameraman, police are treating each of these images as a mystery that needs to be solved. Every one of these photos is going to be another story as to the life and times of Lonnie Franklin. Franklin was arrested last summer after DNA evidence allegedly tied him to 10 murders dating back 25 years, most of them black women from South Central LA. The murderer was nicknamed the Grim Sleeper because he was dormant for 14 years until 2002 when he started to murder again. Is your working theory that that this grim sleeper, as he's known, who was quiet, it seems, for 14 years, may not have been quiet for those years? Well, I don't believe for a minute he was quiet. I mean, he was right here, lived in the same place. You but think he kept on killing? Well, I don't know if he was killing, but I don't think Lonnie Franklin uh, changed his stripes over a period of years. I think he's the same man he was 30 years ago. Franklin's attorney strongly objects to the release of the photos on the grounds that making them public will prejudice the jury pool against him. It's not just the photographs that were released to the public. That's the problem. It's also the commentary that went along with the release by the public officials. Mr. Franklin is accused of murdering at least 10 young women and one man in South Los Angeles, sending fear and terror throughout the streets of South LA. At the news conference last week, the mayor and the police chief both spoke as though Lonnie Franklin had already been proven guilty. These people are not suspects. We don't even know if they're victims. But we do know this. Lonnie Franklin's reign of terror in the city of Los Angeles which spanned well over two decades. But there are significant questions heading into the trial, in part because the DNA that first led police to Franklin's doorstep wasn't his. It was his son's. Familial DNA, it's called. Yeah. It's called familial DNA because it is the DNA not of the ultimate suspect, but of a very, very close relative. Authorities in the LAPD's cold case unit processed DNA from the crime scenes and looked for a match in the state's DNA database. In California, anyone arrested for a felony must give a DNA sample, whether or not they're ever charged or convicted. In this case, the match came back positive for a relative of the suspect. Police then narrowed down the list of possible relatives before zeroing in on Lonnie Franklin. It's the first time familial DNA has ever been used to try and solve a murder case. But authorities had no DNA sample from Franklin, so they staked him out until they got one. And what was it? A slice of pizza, I think a fork, there was a napkin. Uh, it was a total of, of, I think, eight different items that they submitted to us. And that was enough? It turned out to be enough, yes. Enough, allegedly, to match DNA from the crime scenes. But will it hold up in court? Mr. Simpson, would you uh, show your hands to the jury, please? Anyone who followed the People versus O.J. Simpson can tell you, even when the DNA evidence seems like a slam dunk, that doesn't guarantee a conviction. 
course, in the era of CSI, juries have become a lot more comfortable with DNA evidence. Gentlemen, that drop of blood was fresh when it hit the shirt. If Lonnie Franklin is convicted, it could mean a nationwide expansion of familial DNA. This will change the way policing is done in the United States. And if the case suddenly becomes much bigger, with new victims identified among these women, then the focus will be more intense than ever. As soon as the LAPD posted these photos last Thursday, the response was huge. Within a matter of hours, well into the millions of hits, it was just... It was pretty mind-boggling to me. LAPD robbery homicide. There have been hundreds of phone calls, too, each of them providing a lead that now needs to be followed up, each one a potential clue into the mind of a serial killer. You know, these guys, do, they do strange things, and uh, you know, sometimes they take pictures, sometimes they leave a mark, sometimes they do, they call the police and tell all themselves. I just, it's just a, it's a whole science to that, I'm sure, but not for me. Right. Right. A grim science. So far, 29 of the photos have been removed from the website. Their subjects identified. Eight were duplicates. Some are alive and well. Others died of natural causes. But one was a known victim of the grim sleeper, identified by her family. The LAPD says its goal is to know what happened to each and every one of them. Time's on our side now because Mr. Franklin is sitting in a jail. and He's not going to hurt anybody. And so we've got... We've got all the time in the world to track down these, the names to these faces now. Hoping to build a complete picture of the career of an alleged killer. I'm David Wright for Nightline in Los Angeles.